Okay, so let's uh, let's finalize with an example. All right, so we have we have four companies A, B, C, D. Remember, this is the foreign entity has four companies, four subsidiaries. One, two, three, four. It's all under one group. It's not alternative. These are not alternatives. This is not one one subsidiary. Do we saw do we decide to locate here, here, here? No, no, no. It's four. You have four babies. It's not like you have one. Which country do we decide? No, you have four babies. Here's where they are. So let's have a look. With those four babies, manufacturing, mining, manufacturing, investment. Some of these are good. Some of these are bad because there's different types of definition of safe harbor. Immediately, A and B are a safe harbor. Number one, manufacturing. Number two, this one, because the income tax rate of both is, n this one's a little bit under 90% of the US tax rate, but it's manufacturing, so it's safe harbor. Ah, this one, close to the US tax rate, so it's safe harbor. Okay, so boom, A and B are down here. Okay, A and B down here. They're in the safe harbor. Okay, so what about C and D? Singapore, well, it doesn't meet the 90% of the US tax rule, but we're doing manufacturing. Boom, safe harbor. So then C. All right? To qualify as a safe harbor, you must not have percentage of your income from dealing with a legal country and under boycott, associated with the insurance, non-manufacturing income, things like that, right? We're doing manufacturing, so it's a safe harbor. However, the D, Cayman Islands, no tax and investment, boom, safe harbor. It's not, it's over here, subpart F. So guess what? Why do we need to, why do we worry about here or here? It's not only that you get a dividend here, you get to use your foreign tax credit here, you don't get to use it here. Let me repeat, why do you want to be over here? It's not only you have control over your dividend when you want to pay, but you get to use the foreign tax credit. You don't get to use it here. Wow, it's not just a dividend benefit. You get to foreign tax credit. You get to get your tax back. Ah, and that's why, and go back and have a look at this example, because I'm not going to go through it as much detail now. That's why when we worked out the total effective tax rate, remember other taxes was, it's on other, it, this is a, on the grossed up income, so that's why it's one minus the tax rate to work out on average it's 40.5%, so that's more than the US tax rate. This is on average 41.5, it's more than US tax rate, so it's a not a tax haven. Okay, Singapore, oh I've made a mistake here. Singapore is a tax haven, however, what I meant to say was it's a, Singapore is a tax haven, but the income is safe har harbour because of manufacturing. Okay, so it could be a tax haven and you can still have safe harbour because you are doing the right thing in the tax haven. What saved Singapore and made it over here was, and maybe we should have another safe harbour, could be due to the uh, tax rate or due to the nature of the business. Okay, so I'll, I'll upgrade this. All right, tax rate and nature of the business. Okay, let's keep moving. All right, so now we do the, remember this is a whole group, so we're working the, the tax credit will apply to everything. All right, so net dividend, withholding dividend, income tax, grossed up dividend. So we've got the grossed up dividend here, and that's what we're going to tax in the US, 100 plus 30 plus 24. What does that mean? If you go to the textbook, if you have a look on page 565, right down below the bottom table there, do a big circle around there. Notice what you've got are two big amounts. With a passive income, you've got the amount coming from the Cayman Islands. You see, no tax credit, right at the bottom. Zero tax credit, okay? All right, what you've got on the general income is the total of the other three countries. 
the total of A, B, and C. All right? And notice the 57,365, that's the total tax that's paid. And then you've got the foreign tax credit allowed, 54,203, because that's what you're allowed to pay, because that's how much you've paid on income tax in the US. Okay? And you get that back. So basically, that 3162, that's all you have to pay. So at the end of the day, even where multinational, they have a subsidiary, even when they pay a dividend and they become a controlled foreign corporation, they're still under safe harbor because they're either manufacturing or their tax rate is similar to the US. Payment of dividend, they get the full benefit of the tax, uh, tax credit. Okay, so there's the framework and maybe I can make this a little bit more clearer for next time. But uh, we just revise this a little bit more, just to make it very, very clear. Like, first of all, we are interested in whether this controlled foreign corporation is in a tax haven or a non-tax haven. And the big rule here is whether the income is close to 90% of the US income. And so there's an adjustment if for non-tax income because it's before taxes are paid. All right. So, so Singapore turns out to be a tax haven. Then the second decision is, okay, is the money clean money or dirty money? What do we mean? Subpart F income, there are four different types of money. And it's, it's non-manufacturing, it's associated with insurance, and it's associated with with a country that's associated with international boycotts or other type of manipulable money. But if it's manufacturing, that's not more likely to be non-subpart F income. And so therefore, you can get your credit here, just like you can get your credit over here by being a good company in a non-tax haven. By going down to here, you have no control over how much of your income is taxable because all of it is taxable, but you still get a credit. But over here, only your dividends go into your US taxable income calculation, so you still have control over uh, what. So the reason why you want to avoid subpart F is you want to keep control through how much you distribute as dividends. So, and the last part that's not part here is that the credits are parceled into two baskets, passive income and active income and you cannot transfer credits between those two baskets. You go 10 years in advance or you can go up to one year in past. Okay, so that just finishes that. What was in the textbook? Catch you in the next session. Thank you.